Hold tight. Hold on! Fishermen are a breed apart. It is very much a Marmite job. Oh, hell the hate! I do question my sanity sometimes. Every trip is a gamble. You just have to go with your gut instinct and your experience. Come on! Get it right, and the crew can come home with thousands. <laughs> Get it wrong, and they can catch nothing. My worst has been £2.50. I just want to be there to support him. As they battle against the odds and the elements. Things can turn quite nasty very quickly. I think it's the most dangerous job in Britain, this is. It? <laughs> Worst injury I've seen. Death. Now there's a demand for a new generation who are tough enough to endure the call to sea. I don't know anything about fish. They swim. That one can definitely break people and definitely make people, yeah. I've never, ever succeeded at anything, you know? I ain't backing down on it. You learn who you are quite quickly in this sort of job. As fishermen, you are the last of the hunters. Scotland. Here in Peterhead, the fishermen have been enjoying bumper hauls. This season has been one of the best for decades. Ian Ritchie skippers the ocean dawn. I used to do up my fingers. These guys are soft now. With over 30 years fishing these waters, he knows how lucky they've been. Fishing's good at the moment. Fishing's really good in the, the North Sea just now. It's just, I would say the stocks is as healthy as I've seen for a long, long time. Like. Seven hundred miles away, on England's south coast, it's a very different story. Here they've had their worst season in years. Aye, aye. What's all the gossip in there then? Phil is skipper of the Gavenic of Ladrum. Just talking to me here a minute ago, nothing. He said this fucking barren. They've had to go and fish up north. He said once they get up north, the fish is fucking knee deep. The whole range of fish seems to have moved further north. Don't really know why, whether it's to do with the Gulf Stream or the water warming up or feed. Don't know. He said they don't, don't want to. Don't want to be up there at all. They're not very popular, they're not wanted up there, they're not liked. Nobody don't fucking speak to them and that, but he said they ain't got no fucking choice. He said if we'd had to stay where we usually go, we'd fucking starve. It's getting, getting sticky at the moment. Phil's crew are paid a share of any profits, so if they're not catching, they're not earning. The job is getting harder. Not like it was years ago, where you go 10 miles out the harbour and throw a net over the side and fill the boat up. I mean, there's a saying, all you can do is catch it. And it's not all you can do anymore. You've really got to play the game a bit, like. Oh, hot dogs. Ooh, hamburger. Is ready, Cap. After another disappointing trip, Phil and the crew of the Gavenic are heading back to Newlyn. Hey, what's going on here? He plans to restock and get back fishing as quickly as possible. I don't know about anybody else, but I need to earn some money yeah. desperately. Yeah. What fucking do? I'm proper fucking like. Yeah. The bike and the car is gone in a minute stage. The kids might go in a minute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
If he can't turn the season around, he could lose everything. To be honest with you, I think everybody's in much the same fucking boat, really, isn't it? But... Oh, yes. In Scotland, the Ocean Dawn is putting to sea. Aberdeen Coast Guard, Aberdeen Coast Guard, Ocean Dawn. How many persons on board? Uh, seven crew, seven crew members of it. Skipper Ian is leaving British waters and heading 180 miles northeast to the Norwegian sector. That's the Norwegian zone here, goes right down here. We'll get our full day's fishing in and then go into the Norwegian zone after that, okay? He'll be hunting for Hake and he'll be doing it with a new, novice crew member. This will be your bunk. Aye. It's my bed here. That's for a magic happens. <laughs> Don't get any ideas, mate. <laughs> As he was a juice, help yourself a juice. 21-year-old Travis lives in Torquay, but has heard there's big money to be made up north. Literally, I'm in the North Sea and that now. The crew are all right and that, they're, they're cool. It's yeah. a motivation, the money. It's definitely a motivation. Uh, when you've got bills to pay and rent to pay, you know, I need to keep on top of it, otherwise I'm going to lose my house. So far, Travis's fishing experience consists of two trips on a Devon trawler. Apparently, this type of fishing is fucking well easy. It's good to see some young blood coming in. So a lot of the young guys up north hope to go to the oil rigs when they leave school. So I hope this trip goes good for you anyway. How's the fishing down south? Like to catch us here. Uh, it's kind of touch and go. My first trip, we made like £32,000 on the week's work, and then the second trip, we, we barely caught anything. Oh, yeah, it was shocking. We, we emptied the fish room in like 45 minutes. How much would you make compared <laughs> to what you would down south? The last three trips, you're looking at 50 grand a boat, probably. The three, four landings ago, I think it would have been 70 grand. Oh. I want to be earning big money. I want to be earning something decent. I've got an expensive lifestyle. I could easily buy 10 pairs of trains. I'm worse than a woman. <laughs> Unlike most fishing boats, the Ocean Dawn works in tandem with a partner boat, the Courageous Three. 180 miles out in the North Sea, okay, okay. they're preparing to bring in their first haul. Known as pair fishing, the two ships drag a net between them. They're watching it, I was getting a wee bit close. Watching they hit It can make for bigger catches. Ah, oh, shit. But is a dangerous challenge for the skippers. One boat goes in the crest, a wave comes down the top, another boat with a sharp edge can get right through the side of the boat. We have never touched, but to be quite honest, you can't really afford to touch with big steel boats because you could actually sink it to them, and it's been known to happen. Scottish pair trawler, the Ocean Dawn, is hunting for hake in the North Sea. Despite enjoying bumper hulls, Skipper Ian struggles to find young men willing to make a career at sea. That's a tough fisherman here, Georgie, 61 year old, he's tough as nails. Nowadays, many British boats are forced to take on deck hands from as far afield as the Philippines. The Filipinos on board here call a man of steel. Skipper Ian is hoping his latest recruit, all the way from Devon, has what it takes. Get proper big ass You're there to do your work, you know, you don't just sign on like, oh yeah, it's like a holiday, you go there to work, not to fanny around. Another day, two days of us keeps up. You be wishing he's back in the beamers and bricks him. <laughs> in Newlyn, the Govenic is getting ready to go back out into the English Channel. Like the rest of the fleet, it's had a bad season. But while some boats have moved north in search of bigger catches, Skipper Phil is determined to stick to the waters he knows best. I've been on boats since I was seven, you know. Um, my brother did it. My old man did it part-time. My, my cousins did it. Phil isn't the only veteran on board. I'm looking at turbot season and then away. 
Don't know what I'm going to do yet. Don't know where I'm going to go. But I ain't doing another whitefish season. At 42, Simon is the Gavenic's oldest crew member. For working this size of boat and doing what we do, yeah, I'm at the end. I'm pretty much buggered, like. There's plenty of life left in me. It's just my hands are knackered. Boy, if I'm not pulling my weight, then it means the rest of the lads are. So I'm not going to put them in the position where they've got to carry me. That's not really how I sort of want to end end my sort of days on the on the Kavanik, though, you know. Looking to the future, Phil is bringing on a new trainee deckhand to help out. Hi, Phil. Come on down, boy. Right on. The price is right, so come on down. Uh, right. Hey, all right. Yeah. Not bad. Got your seasick pills? I didn't manage to get any. I got the money to get some, but they, I couldn't find any shops that had any. This will be 25-year-old John's first trip to sea. Eventually, I want to move out and live with my girlfriend and own her own place, because we want to start a family, get married and everything like this. Right, let's chuck her off it. Let's go get him, Floyd. Desperate for a money-making trip, an extra deckhand should be a huge help. But Phil isn't holding his breath. Younger people these days tend to get... I don't know if molly cold is the right word. I don't know. They don't mind working hard for a day, but then when they have to carry on for the rest of the week, it <laughs> they tend to struggle with it quite often, you know? Take a good look at that, boy. <laughs> yeah. Look when you see it again, it'll be the sweetest sight you ever saw. I bet. <laughs> what are you going to take with you on the boat? Maybe a little Nintendo kind of handheld PlayStation kind of thing. I haven't really got many gadgets to play like that, keep myself occupied. I've just got my phone or my iPad or the Xbox. Is that worrying? <laughs> on some of the boats, they have um, Wi-Fi on it, so I'm hoping go on my Facebook and that'll be more than enough to keep me occupied. Is it all right if I get the internet code, um, Phil? You haven't fucking earned it yet. No, no, I was just asking you to put it up. <laughs> yes! Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm connected now and cheers. Whoa. Did he have you, did he? Yeah. It won't work up here. You probably won't get a signal up here. You've stepped into oh, an yeah. environment where you want to be listening to what we're going to tell you, get on with it. The girlfriend texts in and all that, and Skype and face ache and whatever. Pff, no, get all that out of your head, forget it. Forget that. Having decided not to head north, and with the crew in need of a decent pay packet, the pressure's on Phil to pick the right fishing ground. Your experience will come into it. Because a lot of it is not written down in textbooks. It's, it's a thing you, you've learned, it's been passed from father to son and from uncle to nephew and stuff. You just build it up over years, you know? Phil decides to try an area 40 miles southeast of the Scilly Isles. It's a fishing ground he knows well. Wanker, it's gone! And where the Gavenic has enjoyed big catches in the past. We are where we were this time last year. This thing down here, and we had a couple of good hauls on the eight gear and then a good haul on the trammels. A little bit of ache, a little bit of whitefish, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Feels all right. If you can get the two full holes here, might be all right. Yeah. Do you want to see what we do with the nets and that? As they prepare for their first hole, Simon shows new boy John the ropes. Some of these lads haven't never been on a boat before. They've never slept in a cabin under the water line listening to things creak and groan. What we're going to do is rig this pipe up here. So the pipe, and that's go up the pipe, into that machine, and down into the tank. It's quite an environment, and there's nothing that you could actually sort of say to prepare people. How old are you? 25. Fucking okay, hell. Yeah, I've been doing dock work for the past three years. What makes you want to get into this? Like, more secure, because the docks is like, they can bring you up 8 o'clock in the morning and lay you off by midday. I want a bit more. You want steadier? Yeah. 
That's it. Just as it is now. I've actually got good hopes for him. Because he listened, which is quite quite a rare thing these days for like the young lads to come on, just listen and take it in. I'm quite hopeful that he, he might be he might be alright. Get a good grip, turn that hand back that way, so you as you twist, you push. What you doing? Wow, no. Don't touch me while she's singing it either. She disturbs me. Hello, me, you looking for <laughs> What the fuck was that? Hello. Lord of Richie. Is Just it me you're looking for? I'm seeing in your eyes. <laughs> he sounds like a brick top. Fucking duet coming on here. 700 miles northeast off the Norwegian coast, the Ocean Dawn is getting ready to pull in its first haul with its partner boat, the Courageous Three. On board, Travis is about to discover if the rumors of massive catches up north are true. Oh, it's a big one. <laughs> it's a big one. It's a big one. It's a big one. It's a big one. I've never seen so many fish before in my entire life. I just saw dollar signs, mate. The ship is targeting Hake. Though it's a lower value fish, it can be caught in huge quantities. Fucking hell. Man, this is shitloads. Once hauled, every fish must be sorted, gutted, and cleaned. Which one did it go? The crew must race to get through them before the next haul comes on board. Travis will be expected to keep up. Aye, a big haul, but a lot of work. A lot more hours in the day. Mixed emotions, then. I've never mixed. I'm always happy. <laughs> the crew might have mixed emotions, because they know have a lot of work hours in front of them. The crew of the Gavenic are also preparing to bring in their first haul, and are about to discover if their skipper's gamble has paid off. Golden rule. If everyone's working, do not stand still. Right. Look busy. If you're not busy, fucking ask or find something to do. Right, yeah. Isn't that right, Cap? That's right. It's a team effort. Devil makes work for idle hands. And if he doesn't, he I will. <laughs> and trust me, you're better off working for the devil than you are for me. Oh, right. <laughs> This is an area of water where Phil easily filled his nets last year. Fucking this is shite. Today, he's barely caught a thing. Well, Steve, you caught yeah. fuck all. What? I thought there was at least one more net of fuck all. <laughs> we give it one more go. It might be too much tide and that, but I, I don't think there's nothing here. Nothing? Nothing. So far, Phil's gamble to stay in familiar waters isn't paying off. Box and a bit of pissers and a box of everything else put together. Nothing. Waste of time. A new deckhand John has got problems of his own. Uh -oh. I was a little bit worried when he said he was going to start doing fishing. He's never been away at sea or anything. He's never been on a plane, never been out the country. I think the furthest he's been is London, so this is really far from home and out of his comfort zone. Oh, we must go rid of you then. I think it will be good for him because if he can't be bothered to do something, he will expect me and his mum to sort of do it for him, bless. Oh, I can't fucking get it out. Oh, I can't fucking get it out then. The whole world is all moldy cuddled and stuff now. As soon as you put one about to do a bit of work, it's like, oh, oh Mum's not here to do it for me. I've got very little hope for anybody doing it anymore. What are you doing with that fucking house? I hope he can hack it, because we can find saving money to move out and move on with our lives. 
He's one's got as much potential, mate, as a fucking bee and a fucking... Hey, hey, give him a fucking chance, mate. Give him a chance. Fill up giving him fucking chances. Give you a fucking chance, you little mouth fuck. Up north on the ocean dawn, they're about to pull in their next catch. Check size like that. It's their second huge haul in 24 hours. There's a lot of fish in there. With thousands more fish on board, it's back to the gutting room for Travis. You see big hauls coming up, and the crew just know it's going to be a 24 hour bender or a 36 hour bender. There's going to be no sleep, just going to be grabbing something to eat and just work non stop. Previously unemployed and homeless, Travis isn't complaining. Making the money on the boat is better than being on job seekers' allowance. It's better than 100 quid a fortnight. You finally get a job that's hard work, but it pays well. It changes a person as well, you know. I was told to go. You used to do it completely different to the way I was taught. Yeah. It's just all about the learning curve. I learned how to get different species of fish. Yeah, once you get used to it, you know. It's not that bad, you know. I quite enjoy it. And you get quick at it, and you just kind of fly through it after a while. What do you think you'll fly with it? Rubbish? It's all right. Yeah. It's rough. No pain, no gain. Meanwhile, on the Gavenic, Phil has decided to stay put for one last try. Oh, dear, my stomach. And John is struggling to make the coffee. What's he doing in there? Fucking gone crumbly to get the fucking coffee beans or what? Feeling seasick is just like being hungover, but worse. You all right? Yeah, I've got to take these up there, but I don't think I'll make it. Yeah, you will. Simon did look after me a bit, yeah. He, he wanted me to do well. Get some fresh air in your lungs. He's a good man. He's a good man. Don't sit there with your head down. You will go down. I worked in a kid's home for a while. That was ace. It was awesome. I was just a support worker, but it was... We were just trying to sort of teach them life skills and just sort of point them in the right direction. Go down there for a little bit. All right. Don't fucking spew in there. I won't. It'll be in my bag if I do. No, no. Don't fucking spew in there. All right, I won't. All right. If you're feeling ill, you come up. All right. Yeah, go on. Do what you've got to do. As the last net of the day comes aboard, it's another disappointing haul. What have we caught? Fuck all. What was in that? Eight stone a butt. Nine stone a month. Eight a butt? Eight stone a butt. Is that all? That's it. Shit, isn't it? With debts mounting and his crew to pay, the pressure is growing on Phil to find the fish and bring home a decent catch. Yeah, there's a couple of little bits we've been across. For, I've been there in the past, and little patches. You'll have a few turbot, and they won the one there. I said to this lot, this thing's going to have to go to fucking Scotland. I cannot see where we're going to make a living here. If the fish are still moving, every day it counts, and you, you need to get in all the time you can. We missed a couple of days, which was two good days. We can't get them back. It's just another kick in the shin, but that's fishing. Five minutes ago, we won't be back for Monday markets as fishing very poor this week. I think it's going to be a long few days ahead of us. There's nothing here. I think from what I can hear of it at the moment, it's quiet all round. Hopefully, we'll find a few monks and turbots tomorrow. If not, we're in the shit. I mean, he's in a position of quite a bit of responsibility. He's got a lot of pressure on his, on his shoulders. I've looked at so many skippers coming down the steps from the warehouse, shaking their head, pulling their hair out. It's constant. She is. It's the third day of the trip, 
and Skipper Phil has decided to stick to his guns and stay put in his usual fishing ground. <laughs> He's ignored the chatter on the radio of trawlers making big money in the north. Right, my little cherubs. Right, my lovers. Rightery. <laughs> if they do hit it big, Phil will need his whole crew to up their game. But yesterday, his newest recruit retired early feeling seasick. How's that toast going down? All right, one piece is all right. Another piece. I'm waiting for a minute just in case. But just in case, just get it in your head that you're all right now. It's over with. It's all it's done. It's done. Get it in your... No one really knows till they step on a boat how they're going to get on, how they're going to find it, if they're going to be seasick. Sheer bloody-mindedness, determination and stubbornness is, is what's needed for this job. Gloves and boots? Let's see you. Uh, boots there. Gloves. Come on, get them on. Let's see you looking ready and primed for action. All right, today is your opportunity to shine. I'm trying my best. <laughs> The nets aren't full, but they have caught some low-value fish. How come this one's got an eye missing? Probably been eating, I expect. Should have gone to spec savers. To maximise profit, the crew will need to work fast, getting the nets in and back out into the water as quickly as possible. Jonathan always stops and starts things. Don't no fucking tickle it. Stamp on it, you fucking girl. First, he wanted to be a window fitter. What do you mean by jump on it? For a little while, he was talking about being a carpet fitter with my stepdad. Then he started chefing. It's so fucking hot. Then fucking hot. He's done other little things like plumbing and other little areas like that. <laughs> He's always one that starts and stops things, so I'm hoping this will carry on. <laughs> oh, fuck my life. Oh, this is the worst thing ever. Oh, fuck. You know. I'm just looking at it like this. John's crewmates are not impressed. He seemed keen. He just. I don't know. Just give up. Just, just didn't push on through, like you know. Oh, what the fuck? Right. I'm not sleeping. What the fuck? I'm laying down because I'm feeling so ill. Hey. So ill. Who sent you to fucking bed? No one. Oh. How the fucking other half live in this world, eh? I don't even want to fucking look at him. Fucking wimp. Up in the North Sea. Oh, hello, Travis. Travis is back on shift. Are you fit? We're hauling again. Looks <laughs> like a fucking zombie apocalypse. <laughs> With so many fish, the crew can only have half an hour's sleep between hauls. They've become victims of their own success. Start getting good fish in. The crew's always happy to start with. Then as they get tired and tight, they decide, ah. Oh. I wish we could get a little haul in here and get some sleep. It's so fishy at the day, I hope. It's rough out there, you know, and the net's swinging around. You've got the boat rocking around, you've got water hitting you in the face. But the weather does make it a lot harder. And sometimes a lot more fun. Travis has been moved to the ice room to pack the gutted fish. Working in freezing conditions, it's one of the toughest jobs on the boat. Yeah, it's hard work when you're tired. When you're absolutely shattered and that, even the simplest job is confusing. Once you get it going and you get the rhythm, you don't really think about it, you just do it. 
struggling to keep up with the huge haul of fish, pressure on the crew is relentless. I've seen a hard day's first day, I'll tell you. I've seen 100 boxes since uh, 22 hours. So he's in, a, he's, in, he's in a very hard day's first day. It's just the beginning. You know, got Yeah. <laughs> We've all had to do it. Oh, mate, I'll do it. That ain't a problem, right. I'm just fucking dead. Okay, I'll, do it. Just... I'll sleep tonight. Right. You're there to do your work, you know, you don't just sign on like, oh, yeah, it's like a holiday. You go there to work, not to fanny around. If you're not going to do the work, then get the fuck off the boat. Sorry for swearing, but it's just the way it's got to be. After three days of searching in the same area, the Gavernik has finally had a half-decent catch. To make the most of it, the crew continue hauling till one in the morning. They've worked the last five hours without any help from their new deckhand. We ain't gonna fucking stick at it. Fuck off. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for him when, like, an old boy like me who's knackered and his old bones and whatever, he should be running rings around the rest of us just because he's young and fit. Fucking, it's his first trip. He should be keen his beans. I know. He should be, like, fucking chomping at the bit to do this. I know. Look! Look! Yeah, I haven't showered him for tea. But if he's too old to fucking work, he's too old to fucking eat, isn't he? Yeah, he's not quite grasped. <laughs> the whole work thing, has he? You still got to get trying to get across like the fact that it's a fucking team. And there's no iron He's... team, but there's a you in. <laughs> he's been messaging me over Facebook every day <laughs> because he's in a bunk, bored out of his mind. He won't really give me any straight answers if he's been having a good time or not. So I'm kind of a little bit worried. The, thing, the best of it is, someone like that, worst thing ever, just completely ignore them. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to do when I get in now. But you won't be able to. Oh, I will. End the day, you will be able to. No, he's done. No, he's done. I feel bad now, mate. No, I don't know. I won't feel bad. I don't feel bad. He's done. He's fucking. He's. he's <laughs> He's totally <laughs> just fucked us over, so fuck it, whatever. He fucked us over? He ain't done anything. <laughs> sure. Aboard the Ocean Dawn, another catch is about to come on board. Travis has joined the boat at one of its busiest times. I've got to chuck the boy over, so I'll give it a good toss. <laughs> it's a bumper hole. Bumper hole. Already the ship's hold is bulging with fish. The skipper will be running his hands in the wheelhouse. A good fish, yeah. Nice big hake. They look a better size, I think. If you hit the hake, it doesn't take long to fill the boxes. I do like catching hake, because you do, if you get good hauls out, you get crack trips. I think we'll go in, as long as you're still getting a great thrill when you get good catches, that's what keeps you going to the job. By heading in early, Ian hopes to beat the rest of the fleet to market and get the best possible price. John finally makes it out of bed. He discovers that the Wi-Fi has been turned off. Good coffee. And that he's in the doghouse. If he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing, then someone else has got to do it for him. 
<laughs> You've got enough to do of your own work, never mind doing somebody else's, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it does piss you off, yeah. I'm fed up of him being this bad. It's like, it, there's no point even being there. Where are you? Get on with it, do a day's work. Well, you will work back to me. You're not coming out there with me. You go to bed yesterday, basically, you, everyone's bolt pissed off with that. And don't tell you to do it because you're down there playing on your phone. You've done my head in. If someone asks you to do something or give a hand, you do it. There's no questions asked. And, and on a fishing boat, you can't be a lazy cunt. You, you've got to work as a team. Hey, bud. Oh, it's done. He wants to know, is he out the back today or off the front? Oh, do you want him back here with you? No. He's up there washing fish. And that's fucking that. <coughs> Unless he decides he wants to go to fucking bed. Having finally caught some fish on their last haul, Phil and the crew are hoping their luck might hold. The fuck's on here, man? Fuck's sake. <coughs> Fucking assholes. Fucking assholes, man. Nine miles of net has become twisted in the tide and been sitting on the seabed for two days, unable to catch fish. Fucking really? But sitting on it, it, it? Sitting on that. Fucking shit. Fucking brand spanking new and it's fucked already. Half our gear's fucking shagged out. I didn't think it was too bad, but here all in it fine weather. There's fucking three or four tiers here that just fucking scattered to fucking bits. Just can't be fucked with none of it. I've never been so fucking skint in my fucking life. I don't know when we're coming in again, I don't know when we're landing again. I'm making it up from minute to minute as we go along. You have a couple of setbacks, and before you know it, it's like, shit, you've only got two days left. What the hell are we going to do? I cannot see where we're going to make a living here. It's, it's fucking breaking point. When I first saw that massive hole, <laughs> I was... Just... It was like an impossible challenge. It was just like, we can't be doing all this. <laughs> Keep you fed. To get the best price for its huge haul of hake, the Ocean Dawn and its partner boat, the Courageous Three, are racing back to market. Your attitude's in the right place. Keep that attitude up, you'll, uh, you'll get on OK it as, as Joe. Uh, it's proper graft. Yeah. I'll definitely do something like this again. Definitely. To keep what fish he has caught fresh, Phil and the Gavenic will also have to return to port tomorrow, whether or not he's made any money. With nothing to lose, he puts the nets out for one last time. Why everyone's a bit teasy, don't you? Yeah. Why is that? I was in bed last night. Yeah. yeah. It was a bit of a poor show. It's, oh. This isn't a fucking easy job, and it's not a job for fucking people who quit easy. We are a fucking team. We bitch, we argue, we have a laugh. At the end of the day, we still do our fucking job, like, you know? Pride is quite a big part of the job. That's the key to a lot of us, like, you know? You're metal or your sort of backbone like if you ain't got that to start with then you ain't never really gonna be an integral part of the team this is your chance to fucking be who you want to be i ain't telling you what to do but no you ain't, you ain't got long to fucking shine like you know if you want to shine then fucking do it sharpish he had a lot of confidence in me to go far and to do a lot and i i feel like i kind of didn't With Simon's words echoing in his ears, John tries to make amends. Hey, Stan, I, I am sorry about earlier, mate. Good. Yeah, I just want to give you a proper apology. All right, boy, right on, that's the way. Good apology to me, boy. Still a bit gutted that you did it in the first place and you feel 
like a tit or like ashamed. As the net is winched in, the crew await their first catch of the morning and their last catch of the trip. It's not good for the nerves. I hate it. It's John's final chance to prove himself. And the crew's final chance to make some money. There's a better bunch. Come on, Brickton! Lucky, come on, baby! Finally, they've hit it big. Phil has found a school of turbot. Fifty quid a fish. Northern Europe's most highly prized prime fish. That's a fucking fish, brother. Biggest fish of the trip, Briggers. Yeah. Guess who's back? Rip top back on the rail. Guess who's back? Hey! You forget about all the crap and the tiredness and all that. Suddenly, you know, you, you all just lifted. Got to work for, isn't it? Even John is starting to get in the groove. I was being a pussy basically, and like I had to get over it and get on with it. Okay. Yep. After days of disappointing catches, on its final haul, the Gavanic pulled in enough high-value turbot to turn the trip around. Brilliant. Perfect. That's the culmination of putting it in the right place at the right time. And, yeah, it's when it all comes together. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> in Scotland, the Ocean Dawn is arriving back in port. Yeah, I'm going to sleep later. I'd do this again, though. I felt like I was part of something for the week, you know, and it felt good. I felt proud of myself for that. Sure that I am worthy of doing the job and worthy to basically work on the boat. Travis gambled on coming north to make more money. At market, the Ocean Dawn's 1,500 boxes of hake sold for over £55,000. Like I'm saying, it was only a half trip, so I'll just give you some of your couple of days. There's 500 notes here you, OK? Oh, yeah, thank you. 500 pound here for your couple of days' work. Aye, thank you. OK? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Aye, a pleasure. Aye. Thank you for the opportunity. Aye. He's earned more in two days fishing here than he did in a week on the south coast. This is a career. I'm willing to work for years on this. I see myself in 10 years having my own boat in Australia doing the fishing on the land down under. That's my ambition. The Gvenik has also returned to port. 6, 12, 18, 24. OK, go on. Against the odds, Phil has earned enough to pay himself and the crew a decent wage. You off now? Yeah. He even decides to pay John. Oh, right. Well. Thank you right. much, yeah. It was 150 quid. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I will say this to you. This has been an easy trip. 
Yeah, they all said that to me as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's an insight into yeah, it. Yeah, at least I know what it, it's yeah. like. So thank all right. you very much. All right, mate. All right, yeah. All right, thank you very yeah. much. Okay. All right, cheers. Ready. And you. Good fishing. Cheers. Cheers. Mate. To be able to pass on all the things that you've learned along your life, to pass them on to someone who actually wants to learn it, it's nice, you know? That's, that's what's so disheartening with some of the youngsters, the knowledge that's being lost from the older boys now. It's such a loss, it really is. The seas give me a good living. It's going to be a hard thing to replace. Where will I find you in five years' time? Uh, dancing. <laughs> Down the street with a can of beer. <laughs> Pants around my head. Don't know. Um, I honestly don't know. Next time, Skipper Drew's hunt for a new scallop ground continues. I hope you enjoy your scallops, you rich fucks. And on the Sylvia Tea... I don't want to be on this boat at all. It's mutiny on the high seas.